everybody. This is Pam at the Paper Outpost and Sunny. Okay, um, thank you for that cameo, Sunny. Uh, I thought today maybe we would just play with some basics. Let's say you've been collecting some stuff as we love to do. It's one of our favorite pastimes as uh, junk, journalers, junk journalers is to collect stuff. The half the fun is the hunt, right? So maybe you've collected some papers, some old book pages, some who knows what not, um, covers to things. I've just got some random things here. And I thought um, if you're new to junk journaling and you don't really know where to start, here are some good basic ideas that can help you get started, get on the road to actually making that first junk journal. And uh, so I thought what we would do is uh, I just have these uh, old German book pages, but you could use anything. You could use uh, dictionary pages or music pages, or um, apparently I have that too. <laughs> um, old book pages, doesn't matter. We've got a myriad of things here, and I think we're gonna play with a bunch of them just to see the different things that we can do. So this is uh, also me whittling through some of my scraps. So looking forward to that. And um, let's do this. Okay, so. Um, let's grab a couple pages from this old German magazine and you could maybe use a, a new magazine. It doesn't have to be an old German magazine, but just something that, um, intrigues your eye. And there's a lot on here and what to do with it, how to pick. Um, let me get a, I pulled it out. It's hiding. Oh, here it is. Uh, so I grabbed a piece of card. I guess this is cardstock. It's like thin cardstock or thick paper, but something so that we can make some journal cards, some pockets and tucks. Very basic, very simple ways to make them that um, you can easily get a little set started for your junk journal and you can be on the road. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to look at my pages and decide which page I prefer. And um, they're all good. There's really no bad page here. So I love that picture of her. She's great. So maybe, maybe I will start with this page. Okay, so what I'm going to do, you can do this, uh, you know, use whatever glue you have. I'm going to use my Scotch Great glue stick because that's my favorite, my favorite uh, general glue. And I have a little glue mat, which is basically a cutting mat that I got from the um, I think the Dollar Tree, the Goodwill or something like that, but it's an easy way to start. And what you can do is just go around and glue the whole thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this whole page and, and turn it into many things and that'll get us rolling and get our creative juices flowing. So if you don't know what to do, grab a magazine page or a bigger page and let's just knock it down into many things. All right, so hope you're having a fun crafty day. Hope your papers are calling you and or uh, maybe you just came here for a little inspiration. Um, let's let's inspire each other. Okay, so now what we can do, did I get it all? I see a bare spot. Okay, okay, Who does dry fast. So we gotta, we gotta move, we gotta move. Okay, so let's go ahead and place this down. I want her to definitely be on here fully. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna go from the center and smush out. Yes, there we go. That way everybody should be nice and flat. There, done. Okay, that, that was easy, right? Now we have a thicker thing and that wasn't too difficult. Uh, we can go ahead and do some trimming on this, but let's decide what we want to take out of this. I think I would like to cut her out of it. Here's another beautiful piece. I could do something with this here and this I could actually cut up into different sections. So I'm just going to work with what is naturally in front of me. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, so let's remove this because we're going to do some cutting with the craft knife and the ruler. Okay, okay. I remember save everything. Like, um, let's see, let's say you also see you have some pretty words at the top. Um, if we're going to cut that off, save it. Like, don't let go of it yet because it might come in handy somewhere down the road. All right, so I'm just going to cut this out. It doesn't matter if I get it exactly or not. I can always trim it um, smaller if I want to make it smaller. Oops, went on an angle. That happens, that happens. Um, sometimes the glue will make your paper damp and it might tear a little bit. That's why it's helpful to adhere a thinner page, maybe a, a fragile page, a um, ephemera page, an old page, uh, to a stronger page. And that way it's much easier to cut. Um, it's a little more forgiving. And if you wait till it dries, even better. But you know, we're not waiting for it to dry. 
firm and smooth. I probably a, a sharp knife would be helpful too, which I don't have at the moment. Okay. So here we have our first little example of something. Now, I think I would make like to make this into a pocket and I'm just going to grab my corner chomper, crocodile corner chomper, and I'm going to why am I going to do am I going to do that? I'm just going to round the bottoms. Oops. I'm going to round the bottom edges. And then I'm going to take some black ink and I'm going to go around and ink it up because I think that will contrast nicely with this. And it's really fun to use black and whites because they look, they pop beautifully on a white page, on a cream page. Well, not on a cream page, but, um, uh, or on a colored page, any color page that you have in there. Um, you could also ink this in say a blue, but I'm going to do black soot. That's the color I'm going to use, but I'm going to, you could also do it in a blue or any other color that you choose. I just, Happen to be going with the black color today. Okay, all right, so I have my black dauber and I'm gonna get out my little spritzer. So this is kind of just, uh, uh, you know, we, we do all sorts of fancy stuff, but every once in a while we gotta go back to basics. Not we, we got to, um, it's great to go back to basics and just play and have some fun with what is simple and easy and uh, also useful. And one thing that is useful in junk journal world are journal cards, journal tags, pockets, and tucks. They're kind of like the bread and butter of um, journal making. Now that just that just really oh oh this is what I want to show you the big trip tick tip of the week. Um, daubing is great, but if you really want to grab ink on your pad, twist yeah twist and you'll grab a lot more. I don't know why it just seems to work. And um, so try that next time. Do the twist. Yeah, see if you get more ink on your dauber. Let me know your thoughts. I've been, you know, banging away at it and uh, it always seems dry, but when I twist, I seem to get a little more. Okay, so now as you can see, it is all hewed up. And even against the cream, it now pops. Look at that. What a difference, right? Such a simple thing to do. Uh, very easy. Anybody can do that. And uh, I don't have a junk journal to put this in because I just sold a junk journal that I was working on. So I need to make some junk journals. But uh, what I might like to do, this is very pretty just as it is. I don't even know if I would do anything because I like all that writing there. But I could even put a little piece of lace because she's working with lace. And yeah, let me just do it. Let me grab a piece. Okay, so I have this little piece of crocheted lace, which I think is pretty. And um, you can get this anywhere. Um, Probably, I, I know I've gotten crocheted lace at the Dollar Tree before, but you can get it at Joanne's Fabrics or any of the hobby shops, Hobby Lobby or uh, Michael's. Um, also online, anywhere, AliExpress, eBay, Amazon, they all carry it. And uh, you should be able to get a decent amount for not too much. And I'm going to use Fabrifix glue here because I'm. this is a clear silicone glue that glues fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, and paper to paper really kind of fast which is nice it's kind of like working with hot glue without burning your fingers there we go all right so and there we have a little pocket so you can put that in a journal let's say this is your journal there we go we could just glue it behind and you and is that pretty that's already so pretty as it is it doesn't need any any dressing up but you could you could do extra things with it but this one we'll just call done so that was pretty painless, right? Okay, so let's see what else we can do here. Um, so that was cutting. Let's try tearing. I haven't tried tearing this stuff yet, so let's just see what happens. I honestly have no idea what's going to happen here. But this gives you a completely different edge. Okay, now let's go a little closer so you can see. Yeah, we've got a completely different edge. Um, it's just a different look. It's just a different way of doing things. It's going to grab the ink a little bit differently. Um, and you might want some variety, you know, you might want variety in your, in your world as your, as your, and I encourage you to try, try different things. Just grab a magazine page and have some fun with it. Don't, don't take anything too seriously. Just, um, uh, you haven't glued anything in your journal. It's all non-committal at this point. It's okay. It's okay to just, um, goof around with some papers and maybe do some things you don't normally do. Like, um, if you don't normally tear, let's tear, let's tear today. Uh, if you, if you always tear, let's try cutting. Let's see where that goes. Okay. So now we have a nice torn edge on this one and this is big. And, um, I'm thinking maybe I want to use this as a, um, instead of gluing it down as a pocket, which I could, um, I think I'm going to just turn it into a journal card and give it a, a space for somebody to write on the back. Oh, look, I have a little extra cut there. Isn't that interesting that I did? Um, let me 
tear it off here where that cut is. Okay. Now, there we go. No idea what I'll do about that. I'll just leave it. Just squish it in there a little. And up uh, the top was scissor cut. So how can I rough that up? Well, you can use the Tim Holtz distresser. You can just take the edge of your metal ruler and you kind of go along like this and just give it some distress marks. If you don't, whoa, sorry. Whew. Okay, that's why it's good to retract your, your craft knife so you don't stab your dog. It, it was retracted, it was retracted, okay. Um, the other thing is, uh, if you got a fingernail, sometimes you can just go along with your fingernail and do the same thing. So you don't really need fancy tools. And that'll give you, let me show it closer, the roughed edge look. Yeah, yeah, you just got that, just like that. That's kind of cool. Uh, maybe I'll round these. I don't know, I'm just feeling like rounding them. And I love these old ads from the old magazine. So if you have any old magazines hanging around your house, uh, in the cellar, the basement, the attic, anything like that, go dig them out because those things are crafter gold. There's so many fun ads in there. And, and when you go into thrift stores, grab the old magazines because the magazine itself might not be that expensive, but the ads in it are like individual ads you can use to eternity. So just remember that. Okay, so now let's, um, maybe I'll do this one. Should I do it in, where did my, uh, who to, okay, here it is. This is walnut stain. It's a little darker brown. And let me find my my very my world famous this this little guy. My brown dauber has uh, seen more things. You can slice a hat at going around. I think going around maybe the same things doing. I don't know. I don't quote me on that. I don't know that. I'm just making that up. Um, just get the ink on there, right? What's that? Huh. There's extra something. Okay, so here we go. We're just inking. We're just inking. So I'll, I'll just show you the difference between the brown accent and the black accent. So you can you can decide what look you want. I think they both look great. They look um, different, and I think that's kind of cool. One looks very um, aged and weathered, and the other one looks, I don't know, kind of, where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. Can you see the difference? Let me come down to you. Black, brown. Okay, and they marry well together. You can layer them and do fun things like that. So, kind of fun. And if you extra do the corners, that's kind of cool. You're almost vignetting it, like um, with a camera. And uh, fade in, fade out kind of look, uh, film look, you know, that's kind of cool. Uh, and you can also, if you have like little folds, natural, I don't know if you can see it in like natural fold there, natural folds in the paper. If you like can kind of, you kind of do one of these lightly over it, you can emphasize those. And sometimes little divots and, and, and uh, wonky areas in your paper uh, can come up to look really cool when we emphasize their little uh, wrinkles and stuff like that. So here on the back, I think I'm going to also do the same thing with the inking. I love this old antique kind of black and white, brown and white sepia and cream, however you want to call it, um, look. And I think that's going to pop beautifully against some pages. Now you can stop right there and that's a perfectly good journal card. There's nothing wrong with this journal card, but if you want to take it up a notch, you can use a stamp and put some lines on it. And let me see if I've got my line stamp here. Where are you line stamp? Here you are. Okay. And maybe put a um, flourish or something at the top to give it a little punctuation of some sort. Okay, so I'm using the brown, but I think for the lines I'll use black. Now, if you don't have a line stamp, um, just draw the lines. Draw the lines with a, either a pen or a pencil or marker and a ruler, and it looks really cool. Um, maybe we'll do some of those too. Okay. All right. Oh, there we go. So I think that's kind of cool. It invites somebody to jot. Don't you think? Doesn't it make you feel like jotting just looking at it? I feel all jotty now. Sonny, you want to jot? He's left the room. Elvis has left the building. He, uh, oh, he learned a new skill today. He learned how to go upstairs by himself. We actually took the doggy gate away and we got some uh, treads for the stairs because I was worried about him falling. Um, 
and uh, he did really well. Yeah, he's won. He's, so he can do big boy things. Oh, I put that on upside down. See what happens when I'm talking to you guys? There, the nut is pointed north. That's right. <laughs> That's that's where the nut lives in my world. It's pointed north, apparently. But isn't that cool? That's just so pretty. And ele I think it's elegant, okay, in a grungy sort of way. And um, I love, uh, ink, you know, when I do ink things up, I love inking them because it allows you to get dirty and play with the paper and not worry too much if there's a little smudge as everything's okay. Yeah. So there we have two things very quickly, very easy. We have a nice little set going. See how quickly this happens? So one is a journal card and one is a pocket. Very simple. All right, let's see what else we have on here and let's just create with what we have. Okay. Um, oh, I, I don't have the, the thing doesn't go down long enough. Look at that. Um, okay. So what can I do? All right. So I've shorted myself. I really like this thing at the bottom. It has beautiful uh, look at that, Whitman and Superfin. Yeah, there you go. And uh, I would love to save that. That's just beautiful. And, and I've shorted myself because my paper was not long enough. So I think I'm going to do a, whoops, sorry, you can't see, a collage style version of extension here. I'm just going to collage some extra pieces that I, I still have. Oh, let me show you what I still have sitting here just because I've been cutting pieces um down here so i think i'm just going to do that i could actually glue it like that that's kind of cool too so let me just glue that down and not ask any questions about it i'm just going to go for it gluing gluing a dash of re reckless abandon a little splash of fun can be simple and we carry on okay we're not asking too many questions we're just rolling with it we're, we're going to figure it out all later sometimes you don't have to know what something is going to be while you're making it i think that's really important to say at this point you don't have to have a master plan you could just be goofing off and having fun and that's okay um, it's okay to have a master plan but you don't have to have one okay so let me cut this out okay to see what our actual dimensions are and then we can work to fill in what's missing. Yeah, that sounds logical somewhere. <laughs> okay, I think I think that's going to catch it. Yeah, it is. Okay, you know what? Okay, now I could, I could just cut that off. Or I could just fold it up and glue it there. Why don't I just do that? That sounds easier. Um, I like gluing too. So gluing, gluing to me is fun. It's very uh, therapeutic. Um, I don't think I've ever actually done a glue book, but I always seem to be gluing something and it's a fun project. So there you go. All right. So now that would actually be a very nice little um, uh, pocket or a tuck. Maybe this one isn't wide enough. I'd have to use it on a, a wider journal. Or you could even use it as a little side tuck, something like that, where you could tuck a piece of paper in here, which would be very cute. Now it's a little bendy foldy there. So we, we want to bridge that and you think I'd have some little piece of something around here how about this I cut this off of something we could use that as a bridge boy I'm really going for broke here but it just seems to fit and it's here and I also have this little piece so why not use it maybe I'll ink them just to I don't know I'm probably not you're probably not going to see this part so I don't really need to ink it but I'm, I'm inking it apparently and let's use the Fabrifix glue here because this is a tiny little glue thing Okay, little finger smoosh, finger smoosh. And let's just lay this down for a little bit of reinforcement. We'll start at this end and we'll just hope you're long enough. You're pretty darn long enough. Okay, straighten yourself out there, mister. I got a fuzzball. Oh no, not with gluey fingers. Disaster, disaster pants. Yep, it's there, stuck there forever. Yep, I'm gonna chase that around the table for 15 minutes. Okay, come on, okay. All right, I'm just gonna put you down. No fussing. No fussing. Okay, there you go. This little last little curly cue doesn't want to uncurl. There we go. Now you're down. All right. There. So actually, I mean, nope, oh, you're too far away. That's kind of cool just on that side. I mean, I don't know. I just think that's kind of pretty and I don't know. I like it. It's just, it's a, it's a nothing, but then we're going to go with this side because I think that's really pretty and I want to honor that. Um, now let's see. Maybe we want to use some different colors. Let's bring in the pink of it all. All right, what is this? This is Worn Lipstick Distress Oxide. And as I've said before, I, I, I personally find the oxides last longer. 
I've heard they take a little longer to dry, but honestly, mine are so old that they they dry pretty fast. <laughs> I think I'm just like rubbing against uh, like old an old barn door or something. There. Now we're using a different color than black and white, making some simple basics out of one magazine page. You can do quite a bit. Okay, so now we have um, an option for a, a shallow pocket or a side tech, or even um, this could be a, uh, a page a, a page tab. You could use that as a page tab, a giant page. I can't see that. You can use it as a giant page tab. You can also put it up here and use it as a giant page tab. So there's a lot of things that you can use these for. And it's great to um, just make a pile while you're sitting there, you know? Okay, let me put my pile. All right, here we're collecting. We have three now. All right, what do we have left on the page? Oh, we have a lot. Okay, so let's see. Now we have a lot of old German text on here. And um, I believe this was gifted to me from Lori at the HodgePodge Cottage. So thank you very much for that, Lori. Um, this is just beautiful. I love that. Look at that. The old Gothic style text. Love that. Okay, so let's cut this top off and see what we're going to do with that. Now, Let's make sure we get the edge. We'll use every little bit of this one page. We'll make all sorts of fun things out of it. I think this piece is just so cool. Now, to me, this piece says page trim. That's that's just what it says because I can get I can cut this little top part off. But I can and I can trim that off, and then I think my journal page will probably be a little bigger than this page. But um, it would look like a really cool edging, okay? And you could also make a belly band out of it, which would be really cool. Wouldn't that be really cool as a belly band? I'm going to leave it long and leave it in integrity because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it yet. So I think I'm just going to leave it as is. You could also come in here and just cut out the words and, and use them as a little embellishment on a journal page and always save the numbers when you see page numbers. Those are so cute for little accents here and there. Very, very cute. Uh, so I'm not going to color it. I'm just going to leave it as is because we don't know where that one's going to go. So sometimes you don't pre-color because you just don't know what colors you're going to be working with at the moment. All right. So now we have a page that has some interesting text on it. And um, these are kind of fun. Um, we could make some uh, flaps out of these or flips. That would be very cool. Let's maybe do that. That's easy. And these are all uniform. They look the same. Um, so that might be interesting to the eye to look at. So let's see if I can if I can cut these out. I'm just going to go a smidge beyond the text and hope this cuts. All right. How do we do? Not bad. Not bad. Not bad bad not horrific okay need a little extra help down here apparently okay we'll try that again there we go oops okay tore it a little at the bottom all right let's go here uh, and we'll do the same on this side they will all be the same width okay okay oh boy you are not cutting well let me let me get a fresh one let me get a fresh one. He's fighting with me. Okay, this is what I do. I have glasses on. I usually do this over a garbage can, but I grab this with jewelry pliers. And I know you can use a little thing, but it never works for me. But I go. Eh, eh, eh. There we go. So you should probably put the masking tape on that and throw it in your garbage. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Safety first, right? Okay. All right. And you're going to find different papers cut differently. Okay, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we are through. We are through. I'm thinking we're not through, but we are through. Went a little close there. Oh, well, it happens. Okay, so we have some nice text. So I think I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut. Let me get some regular scissors. I'm going old school. Going old school. And uh, I am just going to cut these. Um, we almost go all the way to the bottom, so that's kind of cool. And it really doesn't matter where I cut them, and I could cut them at different lengths, short lengths, long lengths. Maybe I'm going to do a variety of lengths. Okay. And I cut you there. Okay, and we have one of those little 
gets to use there, but I have another piece of the repair uh, stuff so we can glue it and fix that little hole there, that little bend with some repair. You can also use fabric here, that would work. That would look really cute or washi tape. That would look really cute. I'm just using what's on the desk. I just wanna kinda honor this little magazine page that we're working with here. Okay, so now we have three little well-glued little flaps. And if I arrange those on, where is that thing again? On a page, that could actually look really cool. My page was a little bigger, but uh, you could put one, two, and maybe three you could put a little piece of material here and then that would be your flap. And you could put little surprises under it. So it could be like the surprise page. I like doing little surprise pages. Those are fun. Um, I think I'm gonna round the bottoms and sometimes just to make it obvious to the person that it is going to be something that they can flip up, I'll put a little something and um, on the bottom. Oops. Okay. Like, uh, whoop, what do we got? Where are those things? I got them. I know they're here. I saw them the other day. There they are. I have these little black um, half back, whatever they are. And uh, you can just take these and sometimes there's enough glue on them and you're okay, but other times not. And you have to add a little extra glue. But if you just put a little dot, uh, it just tells somebody that looks like a little handle. Maybe I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to look underneath. And you could put a little surprise on this as well. So maybe we'll do that. Okay, I'm going to put another little, little dot here. Okay, he's got a smaller one because he's a smaller one. And this guy's big, so maybe we'll put a big one on him. Put a big mambo on you. And then I think I would like to ink these. Where's my... Where, oh, where? Where do things go? You know, there are little elves on the desk that come and move things. Like, I, have, I haven't moved, but things move. You know what I mean? And, and they hide from me. And I, I don't know why that happens. Does that happen to you? Um... I, I, I think these little elves are everywhere and they're in everybody's home. Yeah, especially in the craft room. They're in there and they're in the garage and they're in the sock drawer. They're also, oh, big time in the sock drawer, aren't they? Yeah, let me tell you. <laughs> I could tell you stories about that sock drawer. Okay, let's get this going. All right. So, I mean, you can have a lot of fun with just one page. That's what I'm, I'm kind of trying to tell you that these go a long way when you don't need a lot of stuff to junk journal, but you need to have a few ideas of what you can do and different things that you can make with one, one uh, book page or one dictionary page or one music page or one um, German magazine page or something like that. Okay, so now we have these. Uh, so these are looking very pretty now. I think I'm gonna grab my, uh, what should I grab? Okay, no, I, I always grab my stickers, but I'm not gonna grab my stickers right now because I totally forgot I have these. These little round peg stamps. I hid them from myself. I know, I know. How does that happen? But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some fun little uh, stamps on the back and I just think that would be really cute. Uh, so here's a uh, Canadian goose. Okay, we'll put mama goose there. And I think I have, oh, I do, I have baby goose. Baby goose. Um, and I, I think I got these from Nora Jane on Etsy. So if anybody's looking for little cutie peg stamps and, and you just look anywhere on Etsy, you'll find bajillions of uh, peg stamps. But um, I just thought she had some cutie ones. So um, I like to tell people about it. And uh, okay, maybe I'll just do random. Remember you can, you can do random and it's kind of cool if you go off a little bit and then off a little bit. Oh, that was a dud, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and then... You see, if you have the right equipment and stuff under, it works better. But uh, there we go. And then let's pick a different one. Oh, I love, this is one of my favorites. I want to show you. Um, I get so excited about nothing. Okay, I have two favorites. Oh, God, I've got three favorites. See, that's the way it goes. It's like candy. You know what I mean? It's like chocolate. And then the next thing you know, you're buying 75 peg stamps. That, that happens. Um, the dandelion explosion one, which could also be Queen Anne's Lace. Not sure. Mm-hmm, but I love that. And also the bird feet. Who doesn't love a good pair of bird feet? You could probably make that yourself. Um, but uh, we're just, we're taking the easy route today. We're just, we're inking. And then we're gonna have Hoppy, Hoppy come across here. Okay, there we go. So that's kind of cool, isn't it? Now, I should have put them the other way because if it was really smart, when you flip up, they would be the right side up, but yeah, I forgot because I got excited talking to you guys. So if you do it, 
flip them over. Yeah, and then it'll make more sense to the person who sees them. Um, and I'm just going to slightly hue the inside here to make them look a little cuter. And also, if you don't have a cardstock in this cream color, just grab some like book pages, like these first flyleaf book page things. Um, those make beautiful cream, vanilla, bisque, um, journal card blanks for you to put on the back of journal cards. Yeah, it's like a little free warehouse of those things. So always notice the first few pages of any book because you're probably going to have a front and a back page at least that's blank. And that gives you stuff to play with. Yeah, you're going to have lots of stuff to play with. So these are very, very simple. I didn't even get to show you a tuck or a, or a corner, which is so easy. But I, I think I used up my entire page. So, um, you know, in essence, we are done and we have had a solid. Let me show you what we made of the one page. So uh, started. Oh, oh, oh. Um, it started um, as one page. See, oh, let me back up so you can see. And you just picked a page, and the next thing you know, we have three little flips, and we have um, a big journal card, and we have a pocket with a little bit of lace, with a really cool thing. And then we have this little, this could be a side tuck or a uh, page tab or something like that. And then we even have this piece, which could be a page trim or uh, just cut this little interesting piece out and the number and play with that. So a lot of things that you can make from basically one magazine page. So I hope you had fun. And um, my videos, they come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern time. Welcome to everybody who's new. Thanks for coming aboard. Junk journaling is uh, rocking and rolling, and we're having a lot of fun here. I hope you join us and uh, come on and play and, and make books, and uh, we'll get you going. We have a lot of ideas, and um, they're uh, easy and easy to follow, and they don't take a lot of tools, um, so I hope you enjoy the process. I also have podcasts, which are junk journal related. They're audio. They're not the same audio from the video. It's new material and it covers uh, junk journals, paper crafting, life of a crafter, answering crafter questions, stuff like that. So please check that out. And I have a free monthly emailed newsletter where you get a um, free digital image emailed to you monthly along with a list of junk journal supplies to keep your eyes open for. And um, um, a note from the bookmaker, something that you can tuck into the front of a junk journal that you give to somebody to explain to them what on earth it is and different ways that they can use it. And um, I have a Facebook group. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges. And um, we're also uh, just totally tickled pink and thrilled to see what you guys make from these videos. So thank you very much. And thank you very much to um, my administrator and my moderators for um, really helping the group stay focused and on task. Uh, our group is very very uh, creative or um, focused on those particular things. There are a, a million and one amazing junk journal Facebook groups and I uh, recommend that you check them all out. They're all a little bit different. They all have different focuses and uh, some do swaps. Some uh, you can buy and sell junk journals and things like that but ours is primarily focused on create, create, create. Let's um, share ideas. Um, let's see what you make from the videos and if you're feeling like it jump in and do some weekly and monthly challenges. They're optional or you can just lurk and hang out. That's welcome as well. And also what else we got going? We've got um, uh, I have an Etsy shop where you can buy stuff. Yes, I sell vintage digital kits and those are kits that you uh, purchase and you download and then you can print them out at home on your printer. And if you don't have a printer, I've had a lot of people tell me they have great success at calling their either um, local Office Depot, FedEx, Kinko's, Office Max and asking them if I come to you with files on my phone or on my tablet, can you uh, print them out for me? And they'll give you the instructions on what they need from you and just tell them they're JPEG files. 
and it usually involves taking your phone or taking a memory stick or something like that. I've never actually done it, but people tell me it works. So that's a possibility if you don't have a printer and you still want to have some fun. I also sell, speaking of fun, I sell fundals and fundals are collections of um, old papers plus uh, unique papers, hand dyed papers, creative papers. It's a big stack of papers, about a hundred pieces that I've made um, as a collection. And uh, these are hard copy mailed to you so that you can get started. Maybe you want to see what it's like to play with an old German magazine page, something like that. So you're going to have some interesting papers to play with. And I have um, a link to a video um, that you can actually see a flip through of what is in one um, and some fun stuff like that. So if you want to check that out, please feel free to do that. And uh, I make those periodically. And when I have them available, I put them up in my Etsy shop. So just take a peek. And if you happen to see one and you're so inclined, grab it. Um, also, I have an Amazon shop. If you're looking for favorite tools and supplies for anything that, that, that I use, I try and put the basics that I use in there. Um, and I also do attempt to put some links down below. Um, I may or may not be able to always do that on the videos, but you will find 99% of the stuff that I use in my Amazon shop. So if you're looking for details on any product, um, that's a great place to start looking. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And you can find all the links to everything I've just said down below in the drop down description box below every video. And um, if you find value here, please like, subscribe, and share. And um, click the notification bell if you want to be notified of new videos that come out. And remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon. I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Bye.